TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we might not be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, don't forget, if you miss a live and you want to watch any of the previous lives or be ready for the next live, all you got to do is go to twitch.com. Type in this right here as you see it. And you'll be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Twitch is growing very rapidly right now because I've been consistent over there. If you ever see me missing here, this is where I'm going to be forever. So to, to just lock in. Don't forget we do got Patreon. We post five days a week and we post any material that doesn't go on YouTube. Or can't go on YouTube for some reason. And we also got merch. The link to all of that is down in the description below. Let's get into this, man. This is Lad Bible TV. It's the OG, man. It's the OG. OG. They, this is perfect for reaction channels, man. They stay true. They stay down. They let us use it. And I appreciate it. I've been subbed up for years, I think. <clears throat> this is my abuses. Jehovah's Witness mother tortured me for 13 years. Okay, I'm interested. So I, I was born in the lovely town of Cheltenham. Um, and my parents, they both had substance abuse issues. So my early years weren't the best, but you know, they did try. My earliest memories are in a house with no carpets, uh, looking for food with my sister. How old were you at this point? I had to look around, I'm like, I ain't got no carpet either. Nowadays, we don't even really want carpet in America, at least. I don't know how, maybe in the bedroom. I, I would have been not much more than three years old. Dang. Um, just over three years old. Yeah, so all of y'all who think y'all kids don't remember, about two and a half, two, three, they start remembering. <laughs> at this point, my dad was really struggling to take care of us at all, um, along with his heroin issues. They started looking for private fostering arrangements and they heard of Eunice Spry. So your parents were struggling with drug addiction, they had no money, and they did. The, they thought they were doing the right thing. Okay. She was kind of like a bit of a hero in the local community and was well regarded. She'd already adopted a child. Um, you know, she was always trying to look out for other children and I don't know who made contact with who, but um, she had like a half an hour conversation with my mum. And next thing I know, we are packing our bags and getting into the yellow Volvo and moving to Tewkesbury. Do you remember much of that experience? So I, I've, like weirdly, I'd, I'd been only coming up for four years old, but I can remember everything of that day. We drove through. It'd be like that. I can remember stuff too from that, like back then, but I can't remember from like my, like age 10, 9, 8. I don't really remember nothing, but like back then, like three, four, five, I can remember. <laughs> through the countryside to Chicksbury, and we arrive at, you know, we've lived in quite a derelict house before this. So to arrive at this really quite nice big four bedroom house, uh, in a quite, not well-to-do, but a quite nice neighborhood. I remember walking through the house, there was a playroom uh, just filled with toys. Uh, there was a garden filled with like, you know, sand pits and water tables and stuff. And it, it, it was amazing. Looks uh, I sound fun. remember her having to pretty much drag me in that first night because I, I was just playing in the sand pit. And like those first memories were really good for me. And who else was living in the household? Yeah, my sister moved in with me. Um, there was a Victoria, or Toria, she was called back then. And there was uh, a girl called Charlotte, who was adopted by Eunice. Victoria was also adopted by Eunice. And there were uh, Eunice's real daughter, Judith, who was part-time living in the house. And of course, Eunice. And what was your initial impression of Eunice? I don't know what just happened. I thought, see, that's like, man, that's a scary thing, man. It's a necessary thing, something sometimes, 
like to put your children in adoption and homes and like because you really can't do for them or you're in a situation they passed on to the next life your parents but like it's scary man nobody gonna take care of your child like you are most of the time not all of the time being a jehovah's witness she was always quite strict every sunday we'd go to church for two hours um thursday evenings there was uh, you know a church session where uh we probably an hour in church in the thursday evening and then you'd have bible studies and then you'd also have bible club you know straight away there was it, it, it was quite evident she thought we were sinning yeah man i'm a christian but i can't do all that like i ain't even gonna lie but church and bible study is that's 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 i got it that's two days that's there's like there's no time and restrictions on it but like for me at least we locked in right there and i help with the social media that, that after that like come on now me and god locked in anything else all the time she would be quoting scriptures to try and point out everything we were doing was a sin so that right there. yeah it got quite, kind of messed up really quickly and what was that i suppose turning point in her treatment of you we were all called up to charlotte's bedroom which was the nicest bedroom in the house mm -hmm. and Eunice had found out some chocolate had gone missing in the house and she was determined it was one of us three. Uh, That's the thing, like, you gotta take into account that these are children. <laughs> chocolate is gonna go missing if you leave it in an accessible spot or let them see it like the children. So, myself, Victoria, or Loma. All right, let's just. So, she asked us to all stand in a semicircle and asked us one at a time, did we take the chocolate? I said no. Um, Aloma said no, Victoria said no. And she was right up in our face while asking this. It, it was weird. I, I made the mistake of laughing because it, it was a very weird situation. <laughs> I would have laughed too, low key. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd have been five years old at this point, five or six. She then walked over to the corner of the room and picked up a an old gnarly chair leg. And then she took the stick and smashed it across the tops of our feet. Now, Ooh. this is probably the first time I've ever felt real pain, like real, real, real pain. And straight away, I, I collapsed on the floor. And my sister- Then I heard a grown man. I ain't even gonna hold you. I stubbed my toe and I'm gone. For 20 minutes, I'm in pain. So it did the same. Only Victoria managed to stand up to it, actually, which really pissed Eunice off. And the next round, so she did it all once on our feet. The next round was way harder because Victoria had managed to stand up. You gotta stay down. But yeah, that, that was the first crossing the line incident. Probably within the course of a month, we went from having very basic Jehovah's Witness style. To even like, not even to this extent, but when your parents used to discipline you as a child, if you my age or like in your tw late twenties or something like that, you used to get disciplined. Maybe you still discipline your kids, but like if you get used to get whoopings, you used to, even if it didn't hurt, even if you got to a point where it didn't hurt, you just gotta cry so it can just stop. <laughs> like, all right, uh -huh. like you gotta just like, that's what they really wanted to see. <laughs> Discipline to torture very now, quickly. That's crazy. And, you know, this torture ranged from being forced to stay up all night, being, you know, not allowed to sleep. Um, what, she wasn't really what? starving us so much back then, but very bland food, not being allowed to eat what she was eating or Charlotte was eating. Um, daily beatings and forcing us to tell on each other if one of us fell asleep we would have to wake Eunice up and she would punish us or we'd keep a tally and she'd punish us the next morning or walking up and downstairs for hours on end you know kind of messed up stuff yeah, and were you all um experiencing these punishments and tortures charlotte was never abused or not that i know of but 
she lived a very luxury life in com compared to ours. And my little brother Caleb was abused. Um, now Caleb, Caleb's a weird one because um, he was had from birth, as was Charlotte. Caleb. So mentally, this lady considered Caleb and Charlotte, obviously, because they were from birth, hers. She actually like coddled them and was baby to mother type situation. Y'all came in like as five year olds and things of that nature. Should you thought she had to reprogram y'all like that? That is tough. This lady is wild. Was treated so differently. Like Jeez. Caleb was never really allowed to grow up. He had this oh, he dream baby, life. Baby. He was getting fed. He was get into playing the sandpit. You know, that was my sandpit. You know, he was doing everything I wanted to while we were working a farm and barely struggling, you know, barely staying alive. That's sad. If she was beating you and you would have been sustaining physical injuries, are you still going to church? Were you going to school? We went to school and Aloma got caught stealing food because she was hungry. So that raised alarm bells. I went to school and Eunice had kicked me downstairs. We were starting, especially when we moved to the farmhouse later on, we were starting to sustain quite nasty injuries. So I, I had bruises all down the one side of my body. And At what point does the school like, okay, we gotta go check it out. Cause you gotta remember 2000s was, 2000 and up is 24 years ago. This had to be in the 2000s this was happening. Like, it's not nothing that they're, they're like, they're not used to seeing the signs. They see the signs early. So when, when did they start? And of course, know? school picked up on this straight okay. away. Okay, all right, all right. That scared Eunice straight away. And we were all pulled out of school within weeks of each other and home educated. And you mentioned the farmhouse. So at what point did you move there and where was the farm? So we moved there, I think, around 96. Uh, an old guy called oh, John. 96? He don't look that old. He looks younger than that. 96? 96, okay. Oh, he look my age, low key. All right, that makes sense then, all right. Yeah, even in the 90s, they, they're picking up on that. This is not the 70s or 60s, but he already made it clear that the school did pick up on it, but she's just started homeschooling. John Drake. Uh, owned it and Eunice befriended him um, and decided to move us all in so she could take care of him. Uh, Eunice had never met this bloke before, um, but I think she saw gold signs. He was in very bad health, was having to go on oxygen, etc. It's not very Christian. And he, he died semi-suspiciously because he'd been in quite... He was in bad health, but... Um, He'd somehow turned his oxygen off in the evening, so he didn't get oxygen while he was sleeping. And I think everyone around him found that a bit weird, to be honest. Eunice, Eunice had decided that we should all go visit John's body. So we all paraded around John, who was just led there dead. <laughs> to be shown that at six years old is... Traumatising. It's horrible. Yeah, she liked to see us scared. That... that, that Told you what I say earlier. When you get in that whooping, though, you just just cry. That's what they want to see. That was evident. So I I think she must have weird got way. something out of that because yeah, why would you parade children around a, a dead body? It's just it's just weird. It doesn't like, make sense at all. She must have got something out. Reason for lead generation on a license plate. All right, you got a Lamborghini. Where who we see you? Out of it. it, it just—it's just weird that his will changed a couple of days before he died, and left everything to Charlotte. Um, so didn't have suddenly, lawyers? Eunice is in charge of this farmhouse as she is Charlotte's mum, and all the land and all the money that went with it—it's just a bit weird in my book. Do you think that Eunice might have? Oh, I hundred percent think she did. 100%, and yeah. I don't think I'm the only one. The way the story just went, yeah, me too. Once everybody. we'd moved to the farmhouse and John had passed, um, she basically had an open canvas to 
abuse us. There was no one around. We didn't have daily visitors. Um, there were houses in the area, but they were far enough not to be an issue. Aloma and Victoria, you know, we had a very weird bond. We genuinely kept each other alive from nursing each other's injuries um, to, you know, stealing food to keep each other. I just really just dislike stories like this, but I gotta watch it because it's interesting, it's educational. It just makes you hold your kids closer and make, you know, if you're not doing the right thing, maybe you want to do the right thing financially. You know what I'm saying? But like, this is, it's a cold world out here, man. Some people are really messed up. They're alive. Yeah, we had a bond that was way more than sibling. Burns were some of the bad things. Uh, Eunice had this thing where she'd like to get our hand and quickly touch it on top of her. They're like a fire, coal driven oven. And it would have this steel paint on top where which would get hot because there's a flame underneath it. And she never, we never knew when it was going to happen, but quite often it would be random. She would just grab your hand and force it down. So one of us would come in with one of these injuries and we would try and wrap it and keep it clean. And some of the worst things, get, you know, getting hit around the back of the head with an iron bar and blacking out and coming round, you know, minutes later. It was like being in, at war and trying to keep each other going and like, you know, doing life-saving care, you know, all while still trying to run a farm and be kids. No, your childhood was stripped. I know that she um, did horrendous things. She, like, fed you washing up liquid and... That there were, the washing up liquid thing was, um, she was cleaning our mouths of lies. It's really hard not- That happened to me before, at school too. Like I had said a curse word, we've all got our mouth washed out with soap, haven't we, haven't we? To be sick, and then if we were sick, it's really hard not to be sick. And then if we were sick, we would have to eat that sick up. So the, we couldn't be sick. You had to keep it down. But you know, you're gagging continuously. Um, in those early years, we... I, 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 okay, never mind. I don't believe we got our mouth cleaned out like that, but like a little bit of soap like a little touch of soap and gargle and spit it out like it wasn't like a, I want to see you you know what I'm saying type pause you know we were taking a beating a day a minimum but then she almost started to run out of excuses to punish us so that's when the starving started um, we were given very little food any food we did eat would either be stolen or would be foraged, basically. We, there were potato patches on the farm and apple trees and stuff, and we, we lived off the land for most of those uh, later That's years. Crazy. And she very quickly realised we couldn't be surviving on the food she was giving us. So thus started a vicious circle where she'd accuse us of stealing. We were. But... <laughs> And the punishment cycle kept going on. So land, she would though. start using bamboo canes on the feet. They really hurt. They really hurt. It's like a cane almost across the feet. We would scream when that happens. So she would shove sticks down our throat. Sticks? Some of the hardest times were the winters, the early winters, because we weren't allowed to live in the main farmhouse. And it was in a horrific state. There was no electric, there was no heating. There was, you know, um, it dripped. Uh, is this how it is now, or this is how it was when they was in it? There were rats in it, but those winters were hard, staying warm, keeping each other alive. I remember one day going into Victoria and her being so cold, I couldn't wake her and Eventually, I'm like shaking out of it. Almost froze to D-E-A-T-H. I wake up. 
and eventually she woke up and I genuinely thought she was dying. <laughs> uh, you know, we were so malnourished and so... Probably was. Her body was definitely shutting down. Not well. Up in the bathroom within the farmhouse, there was this cast iron roll-top bath and um, she would fill this with freezing cold water and she would lay us down in the bath and the first thing that hits you is freezing cold. So you almost fight that straight away. So she would hold you down under the water. And of course you, you hold a mouthful of air and she would hold us down to the point where we had to release that air. And you see the bubbles go up um, and then you swallow water. And it was only when we got to that point where you're basically drowning, she'd maybe hold us for 10 seconds more and then pull us up. Do not sleep on this one. Go. This is a sick, sick lady, and I'm curious to see how her childhood was. They got a documentary on her and her alone. And I often think back, and it was only luck that probably meant that one of us didn't die. So I'll be watching some of these lab Bible and some of these documentaries, like, bro, they could easily sell some of these stories to Hollywood, but then, like, you would have to relive that, 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 you would have to relive that every time you've seen the movie or people would come up to you and ask you, but. Did you, like, experience joy, experience happiness stuff? as a kid at all? Yeah, you know, as humans, we we always somehow managed to find the best scenario. Um, and That's true. we lived in this beautiful area that the summers were incredible. You would lie in the fields and there'd be deer running through the grass and you would just sit back and watch them. I would go down and um, yeah, dab on my feet in the river um, in the morning, like five in the morning, the sun just rising. Some of, you know, there were some amazing memories, you know. We, ha we had this amazing holiday in Florida uh, that came out of nowhere. So we, we were being heavily abused. This is just after so all the stuff. All of this abuse, well, she had a moment of, oh, I feel bad, let me take them to Disneyland? Like, you said Florida, right? Came out of nowhere in Florida. Abused. This is just after all the starving going on. We were really in a bad state. And then one day Unison announces, we're all going to Florida. And we were all uh, bought clothes, suitcases. We all roll up at the airport. We fly business class to Orlando. Dang. Business class is better than first class in my opinion. Like? I've never flew in either one of them. I'd just be seeing them on YouTube. So. We rolled into Florida and she was being loving. You know, she we landed at the airport. She had to. We drive through uh, Orlando along, I think it's Highway 41, and there's all these hotels and like theme parks as you go along and water park. Hold on, I'm trying to get to the chat. Where's the chat? Why am I chatting? Oh, see, activity. Ah, there we go. It's an bungee jumps and I'm a kid from the country. I've never seen any of this. Like this was amazing. You've never seen and we nothing. arrive at this villa and there's a swimming pool and cupboards full of food and she puts us to bed, gives us a kiss on the cheek. We wake up the next morning, I'm expecting our daily punishment. No, nope. we're, we're given breakfast. breakfast. Oh my we're given God. actual food. This lady is wow. And we go to Disneyland, we go to Cape Canaveral. I swam with dolphins and stingrays and so we had, had a, money, obviously. the best holiday in the world. Had money from dude dying. Business class, they bought new clothes, they had Disneyland. It's expensive, I don't care when you go. <laughs> uh, they was buying food from there, they didn't swim with dolphins, meaning they was doing activities inside of Disney. They just wasn't walking around getting no, they was everything and no abuse. And when you were in Florida, did you feel like you loved her? 
hundred percent. Yeah, hundred um, percent. She was my. That's how easy a kid's mind is. Naive, like kids' minds, like, and it's so like to manipulate a child's mind is like the top, top, top sin. Like I don't even like that's bogus. Like something wrong with an adult doing that type of stuff, but in this manner, a mom, it's even wilder. She, yeah, you know, she'd give us a cuddle each morning. She was feeding us. She was taking us to these amazing things. She was doing normal um, stuff. I want to think that maybe she was really loving us at the time. But well, how can you the part. flick a switch that easily? I don't know. I, yeah, I've got my personal thoughts. I, I think we were sexually abused in America. That is, that is my thought because there are evenings I can't remember at all. We were in this nice villa, there'd be lots of visitors, and I, I can't remember most of that. And it's only as an adult now when I try and piece together the pieces, I'm like, this, that something didn't, something wasn't right out there. Either like they suppressed the memory, his mind is suppressing the memory, or he got drugged. Also, how do you... Either way, it's crazy. ...fly all those kids across the world. You know, she has no job. That's, that's a lot of money. Business I think too. there is a reason we were out there, but I don't know. I have no proof of that, and that's just my thought. Uh, it seems like what happened a when you got logical back? theory. So, again, amazing flight home. And we arrive home, and we open the door and there's steam in the house. And turns out someone had left the immersion heater on, which is like a big water tank and it uh, bores water. She flew into an instant rage. Immediately and angry. within hours of being home, I'd had my first beating. And emotionally, having had no abuse for you know six seven weeks and thinking actually y'all was out there for seven weeks two months uh, yeah. something was going on he, we finally made it you know we finally became the good children that she always wanted you know to suddenly come back to the abuse was very very hard to deal with and I remember going to bed that night, questioning everything. As you should. So I, I was living with Eunice's parents at this time. Um, both were very elderly. So I became their living carer, basically. And it was only five minutes walk away from our Chicksbury house. But in that time, I didn't see Victoria at all. I didn't see, I saw Caleb very briefly. Our lives had kind of separated a bit. Most people don't know this, but... I wondered what happened to Victoria at this point. Something crazy about to have happened. But what I didn't realize was going on that um, Victoria had been going to church again and a few of the Jehovah's Witnesses broke rank and decided to ask her about the scars. And we, we were littered in scars. But hers, she was very pale complexion. But hers were quite obvious. Oh my God. And they broke rank and decided to ask her and like say, you know, you've got to tell us. Now initially she stopped. She didn't want to tell them. But eventually they kept asking and she broke down and told them our story and then Two days later, the, the police raid happened. 6 a.m. on the dot. Right. And that's the thing, man. I don't even want to speak on that religion too much. Like, I don't know too much about it, but that ranking thing where you got to stay quiet and it's a bunch. I, like, I'm glad they broke rank for this. And it, on the mattress on the floor, so it's only a one bedroom bungalow. And there's a massive knock on the door. And. Red key entry. There. I scurry on out to the door and I open the door sleepily and there's a policeman and he just says, your mother has been arrested, you need to come with us. 
We'd always been told that when Armageddon comes, like the governments and the police will be involved and stuff. So we went into protect mum mode. And I basically gave an amazing story of how amazing our childhood was. And you know, no, she's never, she smacked us once in a while, but you know, oh, oh yeah, we have the best food in the world. And for our- you can say what you want, but the, 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 the the eyes they're looking at y'all says a different story. An hour and a half, I just sat there and basically lied to them and said everything was fine. But it didn't feel like I was lying. It felt like I was protecting um, our family and Jehovah. It just felt right at the time. So the police decided that they didn't need- it's not even It's not even a religious story. It ain't nothing to do with the religion. It's the person. It's the person masking these things in religion. There's false every. There's false. There's a false sense of hope that a lot of people be giving out. Man. Let's go. Salute to crypto for the uh, gift itself. As usual, she's just blessing everybody. The interview there, and I was. What I didn't realize is some phone calls were being made in the background, and they decided to take me to go and see Victoria. Now I hadn't seen Victoria in over nine months. Yeah, as soon as you seen her, it was up. It was over. I got to tell her everything, right? And she was in hospital. But she was paralyzed. Um, she was So what? I'm expecting to see Victoria in a wheelchair or on her bed, etc. I walk into this hospital room. And Victoria gets off the bed and walks to me. At that point, my life so you was changed a lie. forever. And it turns out all these years, Eunice had been denying her physical health care in the hope that compensation would be reached. Wow. So Victoria wasn't ever allowed to get the care she needed to help her walk. So she looked paralyzed. I steamed out. Yo, bro. Out of that room, smashing through corridors. Just, I wanted to get away. I was in full flight mode. That was the start of my new life. That point there, that was the first realization that actually everything had been a lie. Yeah. The things people do for money, like, bro, like, oh my God. How many years? These are children, the most innocent beings on planet Earth. Like, At this you... point, had you been in Eunice's care? So I was 16 years old when the police raided. And 11, 13 years ago. And uh, I'd been in Eunice's care for uh, 13 of those years. In 2007, Eunice Spry was convicted of 26 charges, including unlawful wounding and cruelty to children. The judge described it as the worst child abuse case in the 40-year practicing law. Yeah, that sounds the, like the worst to me, too. I was at work when she was found guilty. BBC News flashed up, and this, this lady's been found guilty. I was in the break room, and I remember this lady across the way when thank she you know she was horrible she's gonna get what she deserves this gotta be in florida that looked like a florida type accident my bad <laughs> skip i i remember thinking i'm one wanting to to defend her for a second and go actually wait 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 that's my mum you're talking about and then actually just sat in back and going, actually, yeah, she was horrible. Yeah, you were right. I think that was the start of me starting to rebuild. I had a friend whose mom was physically abusive to him and mentally abusive to him. And the day she passed away, she had a brain aneurysm while at the hospital getting a checkup. And they still weren't able to save her. I asked them, because I knew, I knew, like, you know, but we kids, like, I knew, but... I didn't know the extent of it all, but I knew. I knew something was up. And I asked him, I was like, dang, bro, how you feel? Like, you good? He was like, honestly, bro, I don't care. 
like he was happy. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I get it. I, at that moment, like I knew how deep it was. I was like, man, yeah, that's deep. Get over Eunice Fry. She got sentenced to 14 years. 14 years? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Which at the time was the largest, I think oh, okay. it still is okay. one of the largest child abuse sentences. Uh, the judge said he couldn't give more. It's so she, she got sentenced like to 14 years. Um, that was reduced to 12 on appeal, and then she served half. So I think it was seven years in total. It just sounds so minimal for all It is very minimal. Put you and your siblings through. She could have got jammed for it. attempted M. A lot of counts of it if we really was fighting. It's quite hard on the victims, I think, to try and deal with the fact that their lives have been ruined. You know, our, the thing is, she got seven years in total. But for us, it's a much longer sentence to have to deal with the physical side. You know, yeah, I live in mental. hospitals trying to fix some of the stuff internally and externally, what's happened. So my sentence keeps going, even though she's now living a wonderful life, fully paid for by my taxes, and gets another shot at life. And actually, we're left to deal with our injuries. I know that your sister, Victoria, she took her own life. Dang. It took a day for me. For, for it to hit me and then it hit me hard and it was it's been one of the hardest things to get over that I've had to deal with um I've dealt with a lot of trauma and a lot of things in my life but to try and get over her death yeah it's very hard to deal with very hard to deal with for any victim of abuse whether it's an abusive relationship an abusive parent do you have any advice? Get help. My advice, my main advice would always be to talk. Yeah, talk. Um, the worst thing you can do is try and hide this and hold it um, inside of you. Any abuse is wrong. It doesn't matter that years have passed, etc. Any abuse is wrong and you deserve a chance to make that right. You know, th there's always that thought that maybe because of my abuse, I'm not worthy to have a child. So that actually put me off having kids for years. I, I'm very lucky to be a dad. Oh, uh, you're a dad I have now? an amazing little two-year-old boy. She's Absolutely. the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, he's incredible. They, and how someone can harm a kid, ah, I, don't, I don't know. He, he's my world. If you could say something to that little boy version of yourself all those years ago, what would you say to him? Just because you're not feeling love now doesn't mean love doesn't exist. And love is a hard thing to describe, but once you've felt it, it, it it's an amazing feeling. Even though that light That's is... That's what I be saying, man. The people's versions of love, they be scarring people for life. Like You can say you love somebody and, and treat them this way. That's a, like It's wild to me. That's why I value loyalty over love, but like, I love my daughter. <laughs> and then, mess, man, my mom, and my brother, like I love my direct family members. Anybody else is like, mm, it's questionable. <laughs> Very dim, there's still a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, like I said, man, if you're going through some stuff, somebody's abusing you on any level, talk to somebody. Call the police. Simple. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.